Welcome to my lecture on hydrological drought. I'm Petra Döll, a professor of hydrology at Goethe University Frankfurt. My main research focus is modeling of global water resources and use under the impact of global change, also climate change. The goal of this lecture is to inform you about hydrological drought and how hydrological drought indicators can be quantified at the global scale. So first I will clarify the term hydrological drought hazard or hazard in general and explain what information can be gained from assessing hydrological drought beyond the more widely performed assessment of meteorological drought. Then I will talk about how to get data for quantifying hydrological drought hazard. As one possibility is hydrological modeling, I will spend the second part of this lecture on introducing the global hydrological model water gap. WaterGap has been developed at my working group for more than 20 years and is now being used to determine hydrological drought hazard at the global scale. Okay, let us start with framing the term hydrological drought and hydrological drought hazard. Well, now, when people worry about drought, they do not so much worry about the physical drought event itself, they rather worry about potential negative impacts of drought. This means they want to assess and reduce drought risk. What is drought risk? Drought risk results from the combination of drought hazard, exposure to the hazard and vulnerability to the hazard. Now, when we talk about hazard in general, hazard can be called the potential of a physical event that may lead to a negative impact on someone on something. Now, in drought risk analysis, the physical event is a time period with less available water than normal. And that poses a risk to humans and other biota. That's when we call that a hazard. And now, as scientists and professionals, we want to quantify drought hazard indicators that tell us about the severity of droughts, the intensity of droughts, and also their frequency. Most drought analysis, you might know, consider only the so-called meteorological drought where drought is characterized as less precipitation than normal. For example, the widely used standardized precipitation index, SPI, quantifies the deviation of precipitation from normal conditions. However, when you think of plants, plants take their water from the soil, not from the rain. So when assessing drought risk for plants, we should rather base the drought hazard evaluation on how much water is in the soil. If you are a water supplier for a city, you're not so much interested in when the rainfall is less than normal, but you're interested to know more specifically when the source of your water is uh, less than normal. And the source of the water could be groundwater or could be surface water. So you are interested in how much water is in the groundwater and how much water is in streams. Therefore, just looking at rainfall is not good enough for estimating risks for humans that come from droughts and equally for fish and other biota living in rivers. Their habitat is the river, so for them it's more important to know if there's less water than normal in the river than less rainfall than normal. This is why it's very useful in drought risk assessments to also quantify hydrological drought and not only meteorological drought. Hydrological drought commonly refers to less water than normal in streams and rivers or to less water than normal in the groundwater. In my opinion, also lower than normal water storage in soils, lower than normal soil moisture, should be subsumed under the term hydrological drought. However, commonly soil moisture drought is called agricultural drought, even though it's also relevant for forestry and nature conservation sectors, not just for agriculture. A very important question for hydrological drought analysis is how to obtain information on stream flow, on groundwater storage and also on soil moisture. Well, stream flow is measured at a large number of locations around the globe. And if there are long, let's say more than 30 years, an uninterrupted time series of stream flow observations, one can then take these measurement values and compute hydrological drought indicators for example, in a similar way as the standardized precipitation index. In the same with this, using the same method, one can take uh, stream flow observations instead of precipitation and compute a standardized stream flow indicator. 
However, access to streamflow measurements is really restricted as streamflow gauging stations do not exist on all streams. In addition, quite a few countries do not like to share streamflow data, for example, for national security reasons. The situation for groundwater storage and soil moisture is even worse because groundwater wells are really expensive to drill and there's not so many in situ monitoring data on soil moisture. The alternative to the evaluation of in situ measurements is to use the output of a hydrological model that can compute time series of soil moisture, groundwater storage and streamflow if there are time series of climate data. However, please note that hydrological models have large uncertainties and the output of hydrological models can differ quite significantly from observations. Still, large-scale monitoring of current hydrological droughts can be done really best using hydrological models. Now I would like to present to you the global hydrological model water gap, as water gap can be used to quantify hydrological drought hazard on all continents of the Earth. Water gap has been developed for a long time and now is able to produce really reliable results, even though, like all hydrological models, it has its uncertainties. Water gap produces results at a spatial resolution of half degree, that is 55 by 55 kilometers at the equator. This makes altogether 67,000 grid cells. And for each of these grid cells, water gap estimates stream flow every day in a certain time period, but also other fluxes like groundwater recharge, and it also estimates water storage in the soils, in the groundwater, and also in other water bodies like surface water bodies. As I said, water gap has a daily resolution, but normally we only look at monthly values. And based on these monthly values, let's say of stream flow, we can say um, if a drought is occurring or not. To understand stream flow drought, let us see now how stream flow looks like under normal conditions all around the world. So when looking at the computations of water gap, and on the long-term mean annual stream flow, you can see a strong spatial heterogeneity. Stream flow is concentrated along major rivers like the Amazon and its tributaries in South America. And in Europe, you can recognize easily the Danube and the Rhine. However, stream flow generally shows a seasonality. That means stream flow varies among the calendar month. In drought analysis, it is generally assumed that people and ecosystems are used to the seasonality of stream soil. So that is the normal. So to identify whether there was a drought, for example, in April 2010, the stream flow in April 2010 is compared to a threshold value that is derived from all the April values during the reference period, for example, 1986 to 2015. The threshold could, for example, be defined as the arithmetic mean of all April stream flows only if the April 2010 value is lower than the April threshold, a drought condition is identified. In the animation you see mean stream flow per calendar month as computed by water gap. You can recognize a strong seasonal variability of stream flow in many areas of the globe. For example, stream flow in India during the monsoon season in the summer is much higher than in the other seasons. In Spain, on the contrary, summer flows are much lower than winter flows. Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you about stream flow of drought. As mentioned before, drought occurs not only if water flows, like precipitation or stream flow, are lower than normal, but also if the amount of water stored on the continents, in the soil or in the groundwater, is lower than normal. If water storage in snow, in soil, in groundwater and in surface water bodies is lower than normal, access to water may be restricted, and that's why for hydrological drought uh, assessment, it's also important to look at anomalies of water storage. And also these water storage are, also, are computed by water gap. One can analyze water storage in the individual compartments, soil, groundwater and so on, but it's also useful to aggregate over all the storage compartments and compute temporal variations of total water storage. In the animation of mean monthly total water storage, you see in red month in which the long-term mean monthly water storage is lower than the mean annual value. In blue, you see the wet seasons occurring. So as for stream flow, the wet season for India is in the summer and for Spain, it is the winter. Drought might be identified if the actual total water storage in a month is lower than the mean value that is shown in the animation. Or you can also take any percentile, not just the average. 
Now the good thing is that total water storage can not only be estimated by a hydrological model, like water gap, but at the global scale also from satellite measurements. The gray satellites serve to determine temporal variations of the gravity field of the Earth, and from that total water storage variations can be derived. And you could now use the grays directly to quantify total water storage droughts, but maybe the better way is to assimilate grays data into hydrological models like water gaps so that the model output is improved. I will now finalize my lecture with two conclusions. The first conclusion is that hydrological drought hazards should be analyzed because humans and other biota depend more directly on water in streams, groundwater and soil than on precipitation. The second conclusion is that hydrological models, like the global hydrological model water gap, are suitable sources of time series data of stream flow, groundwater storage, soil water storage and total water storage. And all of these storages and flows can be used to quantify hydrological drought hazards.